Oh yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. Let's let's get to it, boys. Uh, that's enough pleasantries. Uh, oh, one last thing: windailysports.com backslash chat. You want to come hang out? Everybody but Eric, pretty much. Um, you can come hang out, ask us all the questions that you want about your bets, about your plays, whatever you got going. So let's jump into it. Thursday night game. We have the Falcons traveling up to the Panthers. Oh, this is. I didn't even do this on purpose. <laughs> this is perfect. Um, the Panthers favored by two and a half points. The line has stuck there. We have about 62% of the bets, about 55% of the money on the Panthers over under at 51 and a half. It's stayed there. It looks like 70% of the bets over 75% of the money is there. Eric, I guess you're the dude in like North Carolina, I think, right? Let's, let's ask you, what are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, the game is roughly 10 miles from my doorstep. So right in the perfect. backyard here. Um, the the I-85 rivalry here, um, you know, they've played once before already. Panthers getting the win, 23-16. A um, little bit more defensive pressure for the Panthers in that game, causing, causing Matt Ryan to uh, pump a few times more than he normally would. Um, he struggled, you know, 21-37, 200 yards and a pick. Um, no Julio Jones, I don't believe, in the first game. Um, this time around, the Panthers will be lacking some defensive pressure. No Kwan Short, uh, no Gross Matos. And I think I just saw today that um, on the flip side of that, we'll be without um, Russell Okun, too. So um, a little bit of doubt, the dynamic shift there um, for some missing pieces. Um, Bridgewater, man, he's, he's doing thing. Uh, it's looking like a uh, Panthers positive on that switch between Teddy and Cam, especially given the last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, but the Panthers off of a heartbreaker down in New Orleans. And so we'll have to see how they react to that coming off a short week. Um, the Falcons um, find a, yet another way to choke uh, by scoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so right. I, I don't know how, how else can you, can you find a way to choke something away Atlanta? Um, however, um, you know this game coming up here. Uh, this this game is always is always always tense. Um, short week. Uh, Falcons in revenge mode. Hell, the way their season's going, this could be a, a Super Bowl of sorts with with the rival again up I eighty five. Um, Julio being back is certainly changes their dynamic. There's really no one to cover that duo on the Panther side. Um, and and Ryan's actually twenty ten ATS in night games. This being a Thursday night game. Um, Take a trend and do with it what you will. Uh, I actually um, I favor the over here, um, but I think I'm going to be on the Falcons as well. Unfortunately for my own Panthers, love it, love it. Give me all the points, by the way, as well. All the overs, I want, I'll I want em. all of them. And I think one last thing, I think Christian McCaffrey may be back. I think it's leaning to no, but he came to practice and was there, I guess. So we'll actually see what happens. I think it's going to be a no. They're just going to give him the extra 11 days. See, so yeah, how about you? Two and a half to the Panthers. Are you going against Tipton? Or, well, actually, you can't go against Tipton, can you? You've been tailing him for like the last 15 years. This could be a boring ass show. Yeah, so short road dogs are doing really well this year. So, I mean, that that would lean Atlanta for sure. It would go with with Tipton's, the everything he just said. I mean, the pro and by the way, it's two and a half, right? So they're like mm -hmm. begging you to take Carolina. They like, like the, the bookmakers want you to take Carolina with a line like this. But with all of that said, and I understand like they're not going to listen, that secondary actually tipped in has been a little bit better than I think everybody thought. But again, it's Julio, it's Ridley. They're not really going to be able to cover these guys. But on the other end, I don't think you can cover Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel either. So I'm just going to go with, I, and by the way, I think Teddy. I think I'd prefer Teddy Bridgewater over Matt Ryan, just in in the general sense of things. So I'm just going to go with the home team here. I think they have a little bit more to play for, and I think they're a better team all around. But you know, they had some of these injuries. You know, it wasn't. I don't think Okung was injured last year, but Matos last week. But Matos certainly was. And, you know, they held up pretty well against the Saints. So you you bring in Atlanta, and to me, it just seems like just let's just take the let's just take the favorite here. I hate doing that. I want to take the dog, but in this case, Atlanta's just not shown me enough. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm weird. You're good. I wonder, I wonder how much, um, you know, the Saints pass was their offense a bit limited. No Thomas, right? No Sanders. So, you know, it's dump left, dump right. Um, get that run game going. So, obviously, Julio being back and Ridley present a whole new set of challenges there. Um, but it's it's lines two and a half for a reason. I mean, it's 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 roughly a coin flip. But to see his point earlier, the whole begging you to bet angle certainly rears its head right here with a minus two and a half. Yeah, and just of note, uh, our good friend Sticks Picks, obviously NFL 
content king over here at Wind Daily Sports. He actually has Atlanta. His, his he has created a model and it's been doing well. It's it's by far not you know fully fully matured yet, but his model right now is saying Atlanta by two points. So if there's a four point swing, four and a half point swing, that's a lot. So I'm kind of curious to see what comes out. I'm also curious to see what Capper Steve says. So again, come back tomorrow. Wind Daily Sports betting membership. Capper Steve has been killing it, but I think I'm going to lean Atlanta, and it's not because I, I want to see see a cry or anything. I'm just feeling I don't know. It's weird. I, I just I don't think the Panthers are as good as we thought they were. I also don't think Teddy Bridgewater is that good. I think it's Joe Brady, and I think Joe Brady's getting a head coaching gig next year, and Teddy Bridgewater's coming right back down to earth. So I am pretty curious. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. I'll take, that sounds, I'll take. That, yeah, that sounds yeah. like the trajectory of Matt Ryan once Kyle Shanahan left. Exactly. Record, which you, is why you, I think Matt really, Ryan's just kind of this average Joe, so to you speak. You lose a really interesting – I mean, do you uh, – I know Robbie Anderson was on Adam Gase's team, so we can't really say anything about that. That's pretty much just a net negative, unfortunately. He's come out, looked good. Did, but did anybody think Teddy Bridgewater was going to throw for this many yards or throw the ball as much as he did? I, I don't think so. I'm pretty confident that's much more Joe Brady, Matt Rule, than that actually is Teddy Bridgewater. So I would like to see what that looks like next year. But granted, I mean, what, we have a six-game sample size, seven-game sample size. Really can't do too much with that yet. But I think I'm leaning with you, ETIP. At ETIP11 out there, anyone, uh, you guys want to go follow him up. So. Really curious. Really curious. It should be a fun 